Hi, and welcome to the video. Today we will discuss the retaliation setup for the Gladiator Ascendancy. The newly introduced retaliation skills offer a great area of effect, insane damage effectiveness, and don't need accuracy to hit, but can only be used after you block a hit while their short cooldown is off. With this setup, you can rely entirely on the retaliation skills as your main form of dealing damage. As a gladiator, you will easily block 90% of the incoming damage, have a 70% chance for your skills to be usable again immediately, and a 35% chance to make them usable when you use a different retaliation skill. You will use two skills alternately, the eviscerate, which creates two huge waves, and a crushing fist, which causes a powerful slam. With the return of reflective mist, the unique Doriani's prototype armor is a powerful way to scale your damage again. With this armor, you can lower your lightning resistance down to negative 200% and apply it to nearby enemies. To protect yourself from lightning damage, you will use armor and damage taken conversions. To capitalize on the negative lightning resistance your enemies now have, you will use the Paradoxica sword that always deals double damage paired with various sources of flat lightning damage, such as Smite and Wrath Aura. It also offers a fairly high critical strike chance. The Crushing Fist hits harder, but its animation is a bit slow and has a longer cooldown. The Eviscerate is much faster and deals slightly less damage, but it can hit the same enemy twice. They are equally important, as you need the cooldown resets for smooth gameplay. It is a very resilient build. On top of blocking 90% of the incoming damage, you will have 5 Endurance Charges, Fortify, plenty of maximum life and armor rating, and excellent life recovery. You need to be wary of lightning damage over time effects, such as the Mana Siphoner modifier on rare enemies. The clear speed is great and scales with map difficulty. More and faster enemies means more chances to retaliate. You can deal insane amounts of damage, but it heavily depends on enemy attack frequency and lightning damage roll. The build is quite cheap, but you need the core unique items to start. We recommend getting at least 10 divine orbs before transitioning to this setup. The Doriani's prototype and Paradoxica are the main ways of scaling damage in this build. You will also need the Glorious Vanity to deal with negative lightning resistance, and the Thunderfist gloves for your pseudo 5 link setup. The unique jewels are very useful to have, but not mandatory. Your main way of reducing enemy defense is by lowering your own lightning resistance and applying it to nearby enemies. Doing so makes you quite vulnerable to lightning damage, but armor, block, and shifting half of elemental damage taken to chaos greatly helps with that. Attacks with this weapon always deal double damage, which works excellently with the added damage from other sources such as aura or support gems. For its veiled modifiers, be sure to include critical strike chance, and try to get lightning damage or elemental penetration. The level 30 added lightning damage provides an insane amount of damage, which mostly offsets the lack of a fifth support gem for your main skill. Try to get a corrupted version that boosts your critical strike chance for attacks, or level of socketed gems. The Glorious Vanity converts nearby notables and keystones to grant completely different bonuses. You will need the Divine Flesh Keystone to partially reduce incoming lightning damage with your Chaos Resistance instead. It can also grant you two notables that boost your damage. The Light of Meaning causes all nearby passive skills to additionally improve your lightning damage. At first, you can use the version for critical strike chance for weaker, but more reliable damage output. The Impossible Escape Jewel allows you to access notables nearby random keystone. Look for a version with the Val Pact as it grants mana and life leech. Onslaught buff for a few seconds after you kill an enemy, generate frenzy and endurance charges on block, and improve your reservation efficiency for stance skills. With the Watcher's Eye Jewel you can get additional armor, block chance, or damage while affected by your auras. You can also include purity of fire or ice and shift 20% of the lightning damage to be taken as a different element type, but that's rarely a problem. To fully utilize your armor, you will also need special rare rings and an amulet that grants you negative lightning resistance. Other than that, you will need the usual defensive modifiers such as maximum life, fire, cold, and chaos resistance, and some elemental damage for attacks, 
or critical strike multiplier. Try to get a shield that restores your maximum life upon block, which requires a shaper influence. It should also provide maximum life, armor, or resistance. The base attack block chance gets overwritten by Gladiator Ascendancy, but it can still provide an extra chance to block spells. Your helmet can provide you with tons of mana reservation efficiency, which will be required if you don't have enlightened support or want to include 4th aura in the build. Otherwise, look for high maximum life, armor, and resistance. Your boots should give you tons of maximum life, high movement speed for the shield charge, and resistance. You can add the Cannot Be Frozen modifier via the crafting bench, or a bit of cooldown recovery rate with Eldritch Influence. You should start your gearing process with your jewelry, as it is the least customizable option. You will need a rare amulet reflected by the mist that grants negative lightning resistance and positive maximum life and other resistance types. You can still anoint it using the reflective oil, but you won't be able to modify it in any other way. Similarly to the amulet, look for negative lightning resistances and positive maximum life attributes or remaining resistance types. To get the ideal jewelry, you will probably need to use the itemized reflective mist which may take a few tries. At first we recommend buying the randomly generated ones from other players. On your rare belt you should look for maximum life, bonus elemental damage for attacks, and resistances. You can add a bit of cooldown recovery rate too, but you will be limited by enemy attack frequency anyway. As always, use the Stygian Vice belt for the additional jewel socket. On the Abyss Jewel look for high maximum life and added lightning damage for attacks with swords. It can also provide lacking resistances or attributes, or be corrupted to make you immune to corrupted blood. On regular jewels try to get bonuses to maximum life, critical strike multiplier, and lacking resistances or attributes. It can also provide a bit of mana reservation efficiency if you still need it. Try to get the prodigious defense which greatly helps with capping the chance to block spells and the precise retaliation for a massive critical strike multiplier bonus. The heavy hitter is the best third notable you can get, but it is not as impactful. The medium crit cluster allows you to get even more precise retaliation notables. Try to mix it with the basics of pain and some useful bonuses such as resistance or attribute as those are very cheap to get. The Bottled Faith is the best offensive flask you can get that increases your critical strike chance and damage against enemies standing on the consecrated ground. You could also use a prismatic tincture with elemental penetration or crit multiplier, but you would need extra investments into mana reservation efficiency. For your other flasks, we recommend using a life flask with bleeding removal, quicksilver flask with reduced effect of curses on you, granite flask with increased armor bonus, and a diamond flask with increased critical strike chance bonus. The crushing fist summons a giant fist that slams the ground in front of you, dealing massive damage in the area. It has four second cooldown, which will be often ignored or reset by your other skill. The expert retaliation support is mandatory for clearing, but it is not that useful against slower enemies. Against uber bosses with low attack frequency, you can replace it with elemental damage with attack support. Eviscerate performs a quick slash that releases two damaging waves, hitting the close enemies twice. Its damage profile is more suitable for the massive added lightning damage from the Thunderfist gloves, but the difference is not that big. The level 30 added lightning damage from the Thunderfist gloves grants almost twice as much damage as the awakened version of this gem. You can also use the awakened elemental damage with attack support to become immune against elemental reflect. The Wrath is an offensive aura that is your main source of the lightning damage for your attacks. Being in Sand Stance reduces the damage you take from nearby enemies. You can also use Blood and Sand skill to improve your area of effect or damage instead. Determination is a defensive aura that greatly improves your armor rating, which is also used to reduce incoming lightning damage in this build. The Enlightened support lowers the mana reservation of linked skills, so you won't need reservation efficiency on your gear or passive tree. The Assassin's Mark increases your chance to critically strike your enemy and improves your critical strike multiplier. It also generates power charges for even more crit chance. With the Mark on hit support, you will automatically apply the Linked Mark to your enemies. You will probably need the Life Tap too, if you reserve almost all of your mana. 
The recommended main travel skill for this build is the Shield Charge, which is a swift charge towards the targeted location. It doesn't have a cooldown but can't cross terrain gaps. With the faster attack support you will move around even faster. If you struggle with mana, you can leave the Shield Charge at level 1 or use the Life Tap support. The Molten Shell is a guard spell that creates a flame barrier around you that absorbs incoming damage and improves your armor during its duration. With this setup, you will trigger the guard skill when something goes through your block chance, giving you enough time to recover your life. Frostblink allows you to instantly teleport a short distance, which is useful to dodge incoming threats, ground effects, or cross terrain. Smite deals a small amount of damage in area and creates an aura that grants you bonus lightning damage to attacks for a few seconds. The Val version grants more damage and can't be evaded. Killing all bandits for one additional passive point is the best option. Helping Alira is harmful for this build, as you want to avoid any positive lightning resistances. If you don't have any other source of freeze immunity, you should pick the soul of the Brian King as your major pantheon power. Otherwise, take the soul of Arakali to help with damage over time effects. The soul of Garakan as your minor pantheon power will greatly help with shocks on you. The soul of Aberath is also a great option if you pursue the Exarch Altars. The retaliation skills are very bad during leveling. You won't have enough block chance, there are not enough enemies, and your critical strike chance will be low. We recommend the other gladiator's specialty to level up, the bleed damage. It will easily carry you through the campaign and early maps, until you get all the necessary items and passive points to transition into the crit retaliation version. You can check out our written guide on the website, or visit the channel for the Bleeding Gladiator guide for more leveling tips. The key to a successful retaliation build is the capped block chance for both attacks and spells, as well as a few important retaliation masteries and notables. Without the chance to ignore the cooldown, or to make them usable without being hit, they can be quite underwhelming. Their specific notables also offer much more area of effect than usual, generate 5 rage on hit, or guarantee a critical strike on every fourth use. Other than that, on the final passive tree, you will also need a source of fortify on hit, life and mana leech, boost your maximum life, improve your critical strike chance, and find a way to generate frenzy and endurance charges. That is all for today's guide. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, or leave a like if you want to see more of our content. Have a good day, and see you next time.